So today the topics we're going to talk about is the network and the biggest network and Bernadette clusters. So thank you very much for being here to listen to our demo. So I would like to do self introduction first. My name is Xiao Yifu. I come from VMware. And now I am doing the PKS and stability testing. And before that, I am working for the VMware integrated container. And I also help to avoid the VMware where integrated open text and VMware Big Data Extension. And then I provide system attacks and developments. Hi, my name is Yu Yang. I also come from VMware, so China R&D, and China Beijing office. So I, what I do is now I work now with my Kubernetes products, and now I do a lot of now, uh, Kubernetes. And now before that, now I've actually focus on nutrient uh, open stack networking so it's quite related to networking so if you have any questions or if you have any topics related to networking internet do not be hesitated to talk with me so for our today's agenda i'm going to talk about Kubernetes, the components and the standard schedulers as well as the quality of the service and some of the network features of Kubernetes. and also we're going to talk about how to enable network in the bandwidth codes we all know Kubernetes. It is the de facto standard of containerizing the application. I already list a lot of the advantages of the Kubernetes. In terms of the scalability, it can reach to 5,000 the nodes and 300,000 containers, and the number keeps increasing, and also it can provide then separations of the resources so you can easily realize the multi tenant and application and then also no matter is public in the cloud and you know, is private in the cloud you know, or uh, other different environments and they all choose Kubernetes because the option is not quite in a wide range and you can easily realize the immigration. So here are the major components of the Kubernetes that we have container line times and so which is the mainly focus on Docker's and the Kubelet. Kubelet is a component that the manage the port. And the SCD is a database. And so all the objects that were stored in this SCD. And then uh, API servers is actually one of the interface for the objects. And for the scheduler, Kubernetes scheduler is the Actually, the tool to schedule working load and as an appropriate no nodes and a controller manager. Engine is the management of the tools for the life and the cycle of controller and keep proxy is a component to manage the network and I provider. It is then if you do ever three and uh, class communication and the network policies and the coordinates is actually the domain server. And let's first of all look at Kubernetes standard scheduler. As you can see from this slide, Internet is in the charts and shows and that the Kuber, how Kubernetes and the choose and the node and for ports and how to do the scheduling. So first of all, and they were in a series of the filter rules. So the purpose is to filter out the inappropriate nodes. So here I have listed the three filter volume filters. So that is to see your ports and do have some requirements on the volume. So if the ports and couldn't match with the volume or it is not in the same zone, the node will be filtered out. So there is actually a candidate list. 
So the inappropriate note will be filtered out of this candidate's list. And the second is the CPU and the memory. So if there is no sufficient CPU or memory, and the note will be filtered out. And also for the specific the notes, and the probably the certain problem need the label. So if there is no note matching label, the note will be filtered out. And the second step is the rest of the note will be scored and ranked. And so there were several folders to follow. The first one is the note replica distribution, whether it's even or not. And another ranking principles is the utilization of the node. And also we need to check whether the resource and the usage is balanced or not. And another noting principle is the affinity and the attendance priority. And then the highest ranking node will be selected and the partner will be deployed on that. And in Kubernetes, they are three in the quality of the service and the classes. The first one is the guaranteed. Guaranteed means when request is equal to the limit, and then we're all set it up, and then this resource will be appointed with the highest priority. And the second the class is burstable. So that means you're ready filling the request and the limit. However, the request is smaller than the limit, so your resource will not be beyond the limit. And the last type is the best effort. That means you didn't fill in any request, so it can only guarantee the residue resources that are being deployed. And for the quality of the service, and the standard Kubernetes and the QoS and only considers CPU and the memory. And here are several band bus sensitive applications, for example, audio video, IP telephones, and web applications, and emails, and also online gaming, as well as the file servers and P2P. So for all of these applications, and we have to deploy it on the node that with the sufficient bandwidth, we also have to guarantee the very low network latencies and very and high traffic in the past way. And as my colleagues just mentioned that there were some sensitive applications to the band in the West. And for example, some telecommunications and applications. And also, we have to consider that in the current in the community of Kubernetes, there is no open and complicated solutions in the upstream to the cluster. So let's review a little bit. Now, what is the current network and the feature of the Kubernetes? The first one, and then I think you are familiar with that, is the CNI plugin. And there is a kind of Kubernetes and add on, including Flatnon, Catico, and Marcus, and Nahua with the CNI genius. And they can be seen as a kind of CNI add on. So the CNI plugin actually provides the layer two and layer three connectivity. So many CNI plugin can provide the native ingress. So you can actually define ingress by yourself natively. And so the CNI plugin is going to point it to ingress to the end point and to identify the responding port. And also the community has been talking about the multi-NNS uh, support. And then for matters, the CNI genes, uh, which is provided uh, by Huawei and uh, Intel and uh, Maltus, and as well as networks and uh, service and uh, mesh. And uh, all of uh, these uh, tools can help us to solve the multiple and NIC features. And because uh, by default, uh, we know that the CNI only have uh, one NIC. However, with this uh, new types of uh, CNI plugin, we can support multiple NIC. And also for the native, now we have the network policy, so which can help us to define the network policy resource and to provide the macro segmentation for ports. And another one is also frequently seen is the service and mesh. It can provide the seven layers of service and mesh. So 
here are some and most frequently seen our features in Kubernetes community. And however, you know, we don't really have any research now for things like network queues. <laughs> On the other hand, and in the, in the virtualized the infrastructures that already solve the problems of network performance, for example, we can use the PCI pass through and then to pass through and then the hardware on the host. And then also we can use the SRLV and then to do some improvements with the network performance. And then we can also and then use virtual switch hardware acceleration to help us to improve the network and the performance. And similarly, for VM, if we want to solve this issue, we have to run the applications within the container and we have to have the same considerations. So the basic discussions in our community are actually in two tools. The first solution is the device plugin. And if you check the Intel and the bottom layers, Developments. They talk about DK plugin. They talk about the GPU plugin. So those are all device plugins that are aimed to allow the port to use the hardware resources. So if we want to improve the network performance, this is actually the solutions that we can consider. Device and plugin can actually match the uh, hardware, hardware resources with container. And another way is the magna VLAN. And you now we can actually let the port to leverage the host of the containers and directly use is an IC. So those are just some discussions in our communities. However, and now we are going to propose another solution, and now which is the list is now on the previous slides. And the network queues requirements is in our recommendation. We think that by using this in a way, we can actually provide the sufficient in the national work in the solution for ports from different or from the more comprehensive dimension. And then as Yu Yang just mentioned, in the in, within the community, and then there were already several network features, and for example, hardware accelerations and different solutions to improve the performance. And so today, I wanted to talk about using another way to improve the network QoS. So we need to make Kubernetes smarter. So what we can do are two things. The first thing we need to do is traffic shipping. So that means that on each no worker node, we have to reserve the sufficient network and bandwidth, sufficient resources in the phonets. And then also we need to do ingress and egress and controls on the port. And the ingress is the feeding and the egress is the alternate put. And then also in terms of the Kubernetes Collaborations will also need to take the network resource into the consideration. So the prioritizer and the future is going to be considered in the calculation. And on the physical level, the bare metal deployment, and as you can see, we already have a quite a fixed physical and IC. So since the bandwidth is quite a fixed, we do not need to reserve any other extra spaces. And however, we need to conduct the ingress egress control on ports. And we already have Linux traffic control, which is actually the tree ship in the queue. So this is actually the NIC. So for each grant in the port, and now there is a branch, and now each burstable port and have a branch. So the best effort port and is shared with no one branch. And so with the scheduling and the deployment, and it's going to the issues and then a uh, it's going issues guarantees, and so the guarantees in the port 
is going to deploy according to the request to guarantee that all traffic will be sent out. And for the burst ball, pause. And the things request then is smaller than limit. And so they want to guarantee that the request will be satisfied. However, the gap between the request and the limit is really depends on the residue band in the west. And then it's going to issue the rest of ones on each branches. So this is from the rest of the tokens. And when they are idled, those traffic can uh, go out. So in the watch node deployment, most of them are in the VM. So on this slide, vSphere plus NSX, you can see the Kubernetes architecture. <coughs> Here, this is the master node. And you can see NSX and CP. And it will constantly watch or observe. Kubernetes objects, and it will also connect to the pod through an MP and CCP and to set up the fireworks. And in the worker node, you can see we can manage the traffic, but the management traffic and the data traffic are separate. All of the pods have been connected to OVS, and there is a specific uh, network card uh, connecting the OVS with a uh, VDS. So with this kind of architecture, on the network card, you can manage the traffic, or you can connect the pods. <coughs> with uh, the virtual uh, bridges, and then you can manage the traffic of those connected parts. And the core principle for us is to manage the bandwidth of the node and the ingress and uh, egress bandwidth of uh, the node. For example, when a user is re requesting a part, Apart from the CPU memories, in the metadata, he or she can add something about the bandwidth he or she needs. And then with the scheduler, the pod can find the scheduler extender. And first, The nodes with unavailable resources will be excluded, and the rest part of the nodes will be scored. And then we can select uh, the nodes with the highest score, and then we can bind a part to it. And then the NSX node agent will watch the switch, and then NSX will register the part, and it will tell. Uh, the part how much bandwidth it needs and then reserve the bandwidth in the watch switch. So on this node you can see the user had selected the 2G bandwidth nodes and there are already two parts existing on it and uh, we can have a 900 uh, uh, mega BPS and uh, there is still 1300 mega BPS. And this is about the detailed steps. The first step on the workload, you need to reserve sufficient bandwidth. With an SX feature that is I/O control, we can set the same share for each of the node. And share means priority weight. When there is a traffic jam in the network, you need to think about uh, who is of uh, the better priority. And in a virtualization or in the cloud, it's not about uh, uh, the running of the Kubernetes. It's also about the running of the other applications. So there is a problem of the weight. And uh, reservation and limit should be set uh, in the same value. 
and then we can guarantee that uh, we can uh, reserve the same bandwidth. And in the notes, we should add a label to illustrate that this node can support what amount of the maximum bandwidth. The reason for us to list the class API on this slide is just that as my colleague had mentioned, we can have the automated result. And one of the ways is that with the NSD and NOC, we can control the bandwidth. But who will help the cluster to perceive that uh, there is a request for the reserved bandwidth. One option is to use the cluster API. Just as we had introduced in the morning, there is a management cluster API, which had been running an edge on that is the cluster API control plan. Uh, play. And then you can define what the clusters look like based on different uh, cloud providers. And uh, in the this uh, providers, we can define the bandwidth. And uh, then it means that on the GCP or GKE, there is a definition. There is a profile for each of the work nodes that is uh, the memory of the CPU. And now you can extend the bandwidth. So with kind, this kind of the mechanism, the Kubernetes cluster, which is running on the VM, can be made into what you have been desiring. And this is also about uh, the bandwidth. And uh, this is a screenshot uh, of a part of how to define the workload provider. And uh, there is a property about the bandwidth. When you had a dedicated bandwidth, then the cloud provider, such as the vSquare provider, can perceive that uh, there is a bandwidth property. And then we will call the relevant interface. And then the VM can be searched into uh, specific bandwidth. So this is about the steps of uh, setting a fixed bandwidth. And uh, Yifeng had just explained to you uh, the principles. Now, cluster API is mainly for the purpose of automation. And uh, this is a new project set up for the automation. And with the cluster API, you can better set those figures. But of course, you can do it manually. Just as my colleague had mentioned, you can set them manually. And now what we need to do is that after labeling those nodes, and then you need to apply for the parts. And you need to tell the scheduler how much resources that work resources specifically you need. And here we had listed the ingress bandwidth and the ingress bandwidth burst, as well as the egress bandwidth and the egress bandwidth burst. And the cost is about a priority when there is a traffic jam in the network whose package would be output first. And next, we need to extend the Kubernetes scheduler. Kubernetes allows the extension of the standard scheduler with additional filter and uh, prioritize rules. This is the external UI. Maybe the Kubernetes scheduler will schedule this. First, the filter, and then the priority. And then you can see the weight here. Uh, from this slide, you can see that there is a chain on the futures step by step. You can exclude the unnecessary node. And I had just introduced three default filters. And if you want to extend the Kubernetes, then it will schedule the external filter to continue filtering. After the filtering, we will have the prioritization. And in each of the box, you can see the rules. And the final score is a 
add up of uh, each of the separate uh, scores, and it will also schedule some of the external prioritized rules. About algorithm for extended rules. First, you need to calculate uh, the capacity of the node. And just now, we have uh, the labeled bandwidth, and then we should multiply it by 75%. And uh, this is uh, the best practice recommended by NSX. And we need to know about uh, the required or requested capacity for the new part. And uh, this is the maximum value of uh, the ingress bandwidth bus or the uh, egress bandwidth bus. And for the rest of uh, the capacities, we should use uh, the total node capacity to minus the existing parts capacity and then the minus the new part request. So you need to check the value. If it is uh, smaller than zero, it means that uh, we have insufficient uh, resource, and then you need to remove this from the candidate list. If it is equal or larger than zero, you can uh, remain this part in this node. And then about the prioritized rules or priority scores, you need to use the node capacity to minus the sum uh, of uh, the bandwidth request, and then to divide it by the node capacity, and then to multiply it by the weight. The more the remaining resources Sources, the higher the priority score will be. So these are quite straightforward rules, but uh, we, of course, can add some more complicated and scenario-based rules. Here we have listed a case. For example, there is a newly requested part and it requests a 600 Mbps bandwidth, and there are four nodes in this cluster. And node 1, well, we didn't label one of the nodes, and the three of the nodes have been labeled. All of them have the 1,000 Mbps capacity, and in node 1, 300 Mbps have been consumed. In node 2, 500 Mbps have been consumed, and in node 4, there is no part running in it. And after the first round of the filter, the second and the third node should be removed because node 3 does not have any reservation of the bandwidth, and node 2 it is exceeding 1,000 Mbps, 500 plus 600, or it is larger than 1,000. And then we need to score them. The higher the remaining resources, the higher the score would be. So node 1, the rest is 700, and node 4, the rest is 1,000. So node 4 will have the highest score and complied, multiplied by the weight. It has a score 4, and node 1 only have a, a 1. So finally, we would select node 4 to um, place the part. And these are some of the figures based on our research. If you don't manage the traffic for the part, then the result is unanticipable. So maybe the key uh, task had uh, its traffic occupied by some of the other unimportant node. And on the right-hand side, in the spec of the pod, I had defined the bandwidth needed. And uh, this is in line with requested bandwidth. And the blue line shows 100 Mbps, and the orange one shows 50 Mbps. So this is our presentation. Thank you. You do you have any questions? We had done something similar before, and we had some other shared resources which cannot be isolated. And I have several questions. The first one is that uh, we are using the scheduler extension function, right? But uh, actually, we also have the multiple scheduler framework. And can we consider of using that? 
Yes, and there are two options. The first is that when you have been starting the schedulers, you can define the policy, and then you can add some rules based on the default rules. And the second option is to set up multiple schedulers. Then when you create those parts, you can dedicate which scheduler to be used. And because of the resource of the network bandwidth is more similar to CPU because this is compressible. And for some of the guarantee part, you have allocated uh, the reserved uh, bandwidth. If the pod is not occupying this bandwidth, will it be released uh, temporarily? Yes, it will be released. You're completely right, because this is compressible. There's another question. I couldn't remember my question, so that's it. Thank you. You just mentioned the compressible, and however, in your chart, you actually filter it out with which slides. I mean, when you are applying them, the 500 and the 600 and one, so this is the not two, right? And so on the first time, you actually filter it out, so it will not be allocated. So your request value, I mean, you already filtered it out for this note. So that means if it is just a request, and then you cannot really, after you filter it out, and you you cannot really guarantee the compressibility. I mean, the total bandwidth is the one. So then, so that you actually calculate it according to this the request of this note. Well, just as he just mentioned that our bandwidth is compressible. So when you are creating a port, and when you are doing a port request, you have to guarantee. For example. In this case, it's the six and eight hundred. And you know, however, when you are actually running within the port, and you, know, you are running it and adds in the very low worker load, so your network traffic is the last six hundred. So we are doing that because we want to guarantee the performance. And you know, when you are doing this request, we want to satisfy your request. And I cannot compress that here without understanding or without knowing that the when will be the peak in traffic in the times. So if in a way only then deploying it according to the compressed level, I cannot make sure that for another part during the peak in the time, I cannot really make sure the performance of another part. So the what we do in here is I probably may have some idle bandwidth and even I have no adult in the, the bandwidth that I cannot the give the total bandwidth that is the higher than the request. So you actually calculate it according to the maximum uh, minimum value. Yes, the, the total um, bandwidth that and adding all the quarter together is not will be not really smaller than our silly. So that means I cannot schedule another pouch and if I cannot make sure that I can guarantee your reservation. So this is the solution. This is strategy you would take. Hi, hello. So, and you know, I think the question they are asking is very reasonable. And you, know, you said that you want to provide a guarantee for all the nodes. So that is quite intuitive. And you know, so when you actually provide the residue of the adult and bandwidth, do you think that this kind of strategy is very constructive? So will you actually consider an uh, like a smarter or more aggressive strategy? Yes. I mean, we actually we are still thinking about you know, are there any smarter solutions? By far, I couldn't you know, tell you that I can find an you know, other smarter resolution because if you guarantee, then you, know, you probably need to consider that you know, you're burstable and the best than ever. I mean, if you know, I can make you know, the resource and you know, allocations and you know, the real dynamic you know, and you know, smarter, and then that is really good. But by far, there is you know, no way for us, I mean, not yet, you know, for us you know, to find a better way. So basically, this is not our solution, our current solution, because you know, for you know, our presentation, you already saw that on our port is not actually on the interface, not often an open message, and you know, this is actually and you know, on the nice. 
C engine. For this nice seat, we can reserve some traffic, but I cannot guarantee that not all the workers and the workers in the interface engine will uh, have a non-fixed traffic not guarantee. Yes, I totally understand. I'm just very curious because you know when you are making and you know, your request, and you know, when you identify your request, and we all know that for cost container it's changing a lot and it's keep changing all the times. And you know, so since I do not really know your work in the load, and you know, I don't know that for your historic data it can be used as a threshold, or I don't know whether you've considered you know, to use them as as the way of the training. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. Probably I can develop a very smart you know, algorithm, and so I can train it, use it to do the training. Yes, I mean, you can probably check your historic the data of your band and OS deployment. Yeah, I agree with you. Know, you. We actually considered you know, this kind of an approach, so probably we can use some very smart you know, AI algorithm, and so maybe not you know, for the application of the networking, but we actually try to use the algorithms and you know, to be used you know, on the public you know, cloud. And you know, we've actually tried you know, the CPU memory estimation, and you know, there were a lot of you know, similar algorithms, but if we can apply this kind of algorithms in this kind of band in the West domain, because by far we know that band West is very, very big. It is about hundreds of thousands and Macbeth. However, I don't know. I'm not really sure whether it is feasible or whether it is meaningful for us to use the AI algorithm to estimate the allocation of the band West. I mean, by far, it's, by far it's not necessary. However, the algorithm really can be used with the CPU. AI algorithm, well, I think that is a very good topic. Probably we can discuss this later. And for the compressible question you just asked, if you've actually allocated the difference in the traffic, I mean, for the guaranteed, there is no, I mean, you do not need to send any or allocate any traffic for them. You can actually provide those traffic to others. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for participating. Our demo.